Coming up, following in his father's tire tracks, Robbie and Evil Knievel. Twenty-one years ago, stuntman Evil Knievel attempted a 160-foot motorcycle jump over the fountains at Caesar's Palace. He seared over the first 149 feet, then went crashing into the ramp. He spent the next 31 days in a coma. Now Evil Knievel has passed over the daredevil mantle to his son Robbie. It was in 1980 that another daredevil, Gary Wells, miraculously survived the fountain jump. Gary Wells, he's missed it. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. He's down. He's hurt. My God, he's not even moving. He's hurt. He's hurt. On April 14th, Robbie will attempt the same fountain jump that left his father with a permanent limp. They are both at our studios here in Washington. It's a great pleasure to welcome, I think they're here, to Larry King Live. Robbie Knievel, who's going to do this jump on Friday, April 14th, 160 foot over, feet over the palace's fountains at Caesar's Palace. It'll be on pay-per-view, and if you've been watching, you notice they've been advertising this everywhere where you call in a number and get to watch it that night, which I believe is a is a uh, 9 o'clock Eastern time start, right? And his father, Evil Knievel, who has done everything imaginable that could be done or attempted. Robbie is 26 years old. He follows in the footsteps of his father. Why? Well, I'm very proud of the fact that my dad pretty much created his own uh, entertainment, sport, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we have disagreements on sport and entertainment because I am risking my life and and the way I grew up, I've got a lot of jumps under my belt, and I've trained hard for what I do. And um, Steve mm -hmm. liked what he did as a young man. You said, yeah. boy, that's thrilling. I want to do stuff like well, that. Well, as a little kid, we used to do wheelie shows with him on the rear wheel just uh, for fun. And in front of thousands of people, I, you know, enjoyed all them people cheering me on. Hey, look at that little punk on that bike twice the size of him wheeling across the football fields. And I said, hey, I want to be an entertainer like that. And uh, I made that bike. I created a spirit myself and a style and made that bike part of me. And, uh, and that's why I'm finally to the fountain jump, the biggest jump of my life, and I can't wait. I, I, I believe that. <laughs> Evil, did you want him to do what you did? No, I remember riding to hospitals many times with Robbie and Kelly both in my arms and having them promise me that they would never do what I did. Uh, I'd say, look at me, what's happened to me, and I'd be bleeding and... They'd be with me, and... So you're not happy? Robbie didn't keep his word. Well, I am, in, in the sense that Robbie has become a real professional. You know, Larry, I played pro hockey for some time, but I never could compete in the National Hockey League. The reason was because the kids in Canada started as peewees when they were six years old, and I didn't start till I was 16. And they learned things that you just can't learn at the age of 16 to the age of, say, 30. I had 10 years' experience riding a motorcycle when I went to Caesar's Palace, because I didn't start riding till I was 16. I was exactly the same age Robbie is when I tried Caesars. Robbie started riding when he was six. He has 20 years of experience, 10 more years than I had going in, and he has jumped further than I ever have and broken my world record. I jumped 21 cars. He jumped 22 cars in Portland, Oregon last July at the Nissan Grand Prix, and he jumped them with no hands. Yeah, when he got on the balance point, he let go of the handlebars and floated through the air like a ski jumper and then caught the motorcycle when he came down. They promised you, though, they wouldn't do it. So well, were you disappointed when Robbie started? The other, the other brother doesn't, does he? No, Kelly doesn't. But I wasn't disappointed, but I tried to stop Robbie from jumping so far. And when I did, he left, uh, left home and uh, went to Arizona and got tied up with some promoter and out to Los Angeles with another promoter and uh, ended up signing more contracts and Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis put together and ended up in a lot of trouble. But he finally ended up with a good group in Kansas City uh, that took him on a three-year tour with a truck pull contests and he performed all over the United States and really has done a fantastic job for himself. Robbie mentioned something about it, entertainment and sports. What do you think it is? Well, you know... You gotta be an athlete. Uh, well, riding a motorcycle, motocross racing, which Robbie did, is a tough sport. They say tough. the only thing tougher is, motor, is uh, uh, soccer. All I can tell you is this. He's going to have to be in the greatest physical shape he's been in and mentally everything when he gets into that area. Caesar's Palace is a tough jump because the fountains are right there in your way. In other words, he cannot make any test runs past those fountains like he can at a racetrack. He can only go very slow down the runway two or three times. And when he gets back there and gets committed, he's just like the Concorde taking off. He cannot 
Yeah. Absolutely stop the motorcycle. So it is an athlete. But it's also well, show business, right? <clears throat> Thrill seekers. I wouldn't be in it if, if I didn't like it and like people and want to entertain people. My dad still holds the number one spot in the history of wide world of sports. He sure does. You know, Larry, Robbie's sportsmen compete against each other. I don't think of this as a sporting event. Robbie's going to go to Caesar's Palace, which represents the gladiators of Rome all over the beautiful hotel, and he will face the greatest competitor in life, and that's death. He's just trying to do something nobody's done. That's right. right? So it, in that sense, it's not a sport, but it's a record of right. a kind record. that not many want to do. I've, I've got three or 3,000 practice jumps under my belt and 160 professional shows, and I've done a few of the jumps that he's missed with no hands. And Caesars is just stuck in my mind ever, saw I, ever since I saw the first film. I thought to myself, hey, I can go back and maybe do that someday. We'll come right back with Robbie Knievel and Evil Knievel. Robbie will attempt this on Friday, April 14th at Caesars Palace. They expect 75,000 people on the streets in Las Vegas. Millions worldwide. Back after this. Friday night edition of Larry King Live. Our guests now are Robbie Knievel, who on uh, April 14th will attempt to do what no one has done, take a motorcycle over the 160 feet leap of the palace fountains in front of Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. And his father, the famed Evil Knievel, who's got records for everything, plus records, 21 cars at a time, 50 stacked cars at the L.A. Coliseum, the Snake River Valley, 14 Greyhound buses. He's in the Guinness Book of World Records for most bones broken, 35. What kind of motorcycle did you use 21 years ago? I used a uh, 650 Triumph Bonneville, which is not too much bigger than the one Robbie's going to use. Robbie's going to use a 500cc uh, two-stroke, but he's building a, he's doing his own work on a motorcycle and really making a custom-built motorcycle to make the jump with. His will be smaller than yours? Not very much. But the same smaller. size in perspective. But the engine will be 100 uh, cc's, 150 cc's smaller. Okay. What takes it up? It's not an airplane, and a motorcycle is not aerodynamic, is it? It's as aerodynamic as can be. Uh, it has no wings. <laughs> right, but it's, it's skinny, and it's got a small motor. My bike weighs 230 pounds. Compared to his, he used to weigh what, around 400 or 500 pounds. <laughs> But he's a little bit bigger than me. I'm a couple inches shorter, and uh, I'm, a, I'm like a middleweight, 160 pounds when I'm where I want to be. Bike doesn't make any difference. The kid named Wells that tried to jump it jumped on a bike almost exactly like Robbie's. If Robbie doesn't know what he's doing, he can go across there in a jet and miss it. Okay, yeah. It's the, it's the person on the bike. Right. you got to have a good bike. Well, the motorcycle, of course, comes into play and the suspension on it, but I had the best in the world when I was performing and missed 14 times, was operated on 14 times, and spent three and a half years in... In the hospital total time. Okay, you can't practice this jump. I'm going to practice out somewhere else on pavement, half the distance, maybe a couple jumps, three quarters of distance, but I don't get paid for practice, so I've got to be very careful. I'll have a safety deck all the way across the practicing I do. I'll set up styrofoam. Well, you don't want to get hurt two days before. Right. I'll set up styrofoam pillars where the ones are now that are built at Caesars. There's a new one since the last guy jumped that holds up the new people mover escalator that's 60 feet from the bottom of my ramp. And if I land dead center, I'll go through there. It's, I'm going to leave the takeoff ramp at 85, 90 miles an hour. By the time I go through the pillars, I should be at 70, 75. And then i got to stop before I get to the rear wall and the underground parking. When do you begin serious training? Well, uh, this is the last day of this tour. I'm surprised uh, I survived all these plane rides, to tell you the truth. <laughs> the joke, I mean, that. I'm steering this, my bike. You're uh, in control. When I get in a plane, right, so I'm a little when more When do you start? Saturday, than... Sunday in Vegas? I start, uh, I get back Friday night. Tomorrow we go to, for tomorrow I'll be back in Vegas. Yeah, this is, um, air, we're airing this Friday, so you're in <laughs> Vegas tomorrow. And right. do you train like a boxer? Do you run? Do you do road I run? run. I, uh, I'll go out and ride like I used to race 40 minutes on a course, real hard, take a break, go jogging, lift some weights, and hopefully get time to play some golf, get my timing in. 
but I'm, I'm, I'm in shape, I'm ready to go, and uh, I'll be committed that day, and I'm just going to put my warrior face on and conquer the fountains. Despite the fact that this is your business and he's following in your footsteps, first, I would imagine, Evil, I know you a long time, you're a father. And first, as a father, you've got to be scared. No, but scared's not the word. <clears throat> Nervous. Well, I was always in control of what I did. And, and to watch Robbie does it creates a lot more anxiety and fear within me. And, oh, yeah, much you know, worse for him than you had for yourself. And I absolutely, and I, uh, you know, I certainly don't want to have to go out there and, and pick my son dead up off that asphalt parking lot. I'm very concerned about him. That's the only reason I agreed to go ahead and work with this corporation. Would you be relieved if he on. said, I've changed my mind? Oh, no, I want him, he, it's a dream that he's wanted to do, and, you know, uh, he would feel lost for the rest of his life if he didn't try and complete it or he backed out. And uh, I know that he's not made of that backing out substance. He's very capable. This is a guess. It is said, some people think, psychologists think, that people go to Indianapolis 500 to see a crash and not to see a race won without incident. Do you think people go and watch in pay-per-view rooting for you? I think my dad can answer that best. We, we both feel the same about it, but go ahead, Dan. Right. I, I think that probably 60% come there really pulling for you. And they don't want to see anybody get hurt, and they want to be part of the event. Yeah. I think that 30% of the people come there and want to see an accident, but want to see somebody get up and walk away from it and not get hurt, but they want to see the crash. And I think there's a 10% of our population, which is proven in everything, that are sickos that want, want to, you to die. watch you die. But, uh, you know, we don't, with those kind of people, uh, we don't care about them. But a majority are rooting for you to make it. Now, they want to I've, see. I've absolutely, through the years, known that people have had good wishes and prayers for me before I've gone because I can feel it. You can just feel it mm -hmm. coming across the stadium. You've got to have a sense of humor, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, how is your physical condition now, Eagle? I feel great, Larry. I'm playing golf uh, when I get the time when he hasn't got me to work. Uh, You're not doing any day. stunts anymore? No, I don't ride at all anymore. I uh, retired from the business of stunting. 79 or 80, I stopped completely. And uh, to tell you the truth, to be real honest about it, I just didn't have the guts to pull the trigger anymore. It's only so many days you can walk down Main Street at high noon and shoot something. Did it happen in a try at something, or did you know without having to uh, uh, race to know you were <clears> done? <throat> well, I, in 79, I, in 75 or 76, I started Robbie around the country touring with me and bought him a lot of equipment and motorcycles and tried to help him as much as I could. And in 79, we were in Florida together, and I woke up one morning and he was gone. He'd run into some little girl that told him he could be a star and make it on his own, so he hadn't they took off, and uh, so I thought, well, I might as well forget this. So I went back to Montana and just kind of gave it up. And then uh, he did that because I was trying to hold him down. I would not let him jump more than 10 vehicles, and he was he kept wanting to jump further and but further. But when did further. you know you didn't want to ride? Well, I only stayed with it long enough to to be with him and to try and help him. And I mean, but was there a, a time where you were driving and you said, I'm not going to do this anymore? Yeah, not 1980, I just said, forget it. I'm... I'm uh, 38 years old, and I just can't handle this anymore. My recuperative powers were gone. I knew that. It couldn't heal up. And Larry, when you're a daredevil or a life risker, if you're going to be a success, you must pay a price. And you got to fall off once in a while in a number of years, because if you don't, it's a miracle. He's already had three pretty bad accidents. Robbie has. I guess so. Robbie Knievel and Evil Knievel, this event is Friday, April 14th at Caesars Palace. We'll talk about what's it like to actually do it after this. wife think? I think uh, she doesn't really know. I met her before I had any, or after my bad accidents were over on the street and a few broken bones that I'd broken. And she went into this kind of like I did. <laughs> Where am I going to go with it? And now I'm at something that I've waited for for a long time and she wishes me all the best. And I don't really want a little boy because I think he'll grow up and want to do the same thing. Glad you I do it. I, I got a little girl named Kristen. Pretty you don't want a brat like the world himself, and uh, <laughs> just jumps over and taking her to Disney World. <laughs> you, are they paid for that? I'm going to Disney no. Land. No, that'd be nice. They ought to do that. I'm going to Disney World. Somebody ought to say, "Hey, hey he lands, he makes it. Where are you going? I'm going to." And it would be the truth. Uh, um, is your wife fearful? Um, I think so. Um, she's happy. She's, Not apprehensive. Uh, I think uh, 
I think she doesn't understand a lot of it, but now that it's coming down to this, she's seen the seven years I've been around her, I think she's, she's started to understand kind of what's going on with this kind of business and where I, I knew I could get to. What does your brother do? He runs a very large telemarketing business in Las Vegas and has been very successful over the last six years. You're as proud of him as you are of Robbie? Oh, yes. He's, a, he's a, probably the number two man in the country. He's got a hundred and some employees and really has done very well. He works very hard at it. And I have a daughter, Tracy. She's a missionary. She's been in Pakistan and India for a couple of years with her husband. Is she coming in for this? We've got a little monkey that's ten years old. She's kind of the boss of the family. Is she coming in, sister? Yeah. Everybody, so. everybody's yeah. trying to get in. I mean, it's been an emotional thing between the... turned into an emotional thing between the whole family. Like, his dad was into car racing and building little race cars. And uh, it's, this thing's for the family, for me, for my great-grandmother who's still alive. She's the artery of the whole family. She's still got every brain in her head. 96 <laughs> years old. When he's going, where will you be? When he takes well, off, where will he well, be? I'll be at the takeoff ramp, but I'm going to go out with him to the starting area and help him out there as much as I can and with the guys that are going to work with him. And then she will be like in the pit. I'll be right there with him until he wants me to go ahead and go down to the gym so he can be by himself and get ready to uh, go. And then you will, you will need a monitor, right? Because if he takes off, if you're, you're behind it, you don't know if he gets over to the other well, side. Well, I'll, I'll know somehow. Because you're going to be at the starting point, right? Yeah, right okay. at the takeoff. How fast will you be going before you hit air? I'll be doing 85 to 90 miles an hour. I've never used a speedometer, neither has he. I've always done it by feel. I've used my ramps for distance to calculate my feelings. And I know how fast to go now, but I'll do a lot of practice jumps and know exactly where to hit. He's going to jump almost 30 feet further than I did. I'll in be other in words, his ramp, the setup with his, not only does he have more to negotiate in the parking lot because of the beautiful additions they've made out there and the pillars they've had to put up, I didn't have that when I jumped. I just had an open parking lot. So... Robbie's going to try and go close to 175, 180 feet. Your bailout, for want of a better term, is nowhere, right? It's concrete or the pool. Well, I'm going to pad the pillars and the walls, but at the 70, pillars of the, of the fountain. Yeah, no. at the, in the landing in the parking. parking lot. If okay. uh, even at 80 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour, hitting that padding, it's not going to help too much, but it'll help a little. If it rains, you got to wash it off to the next day. Well, maybe. Uh, you know, the research that we've done on this, Larry, uh, we've sent to Italy for a helmet made by a company called Nolan that if Robbie falls off like I did, may save his life. The helmet that I had on was made here in this country and did save my life, but if it had had a better liner in it like these new helmets, I may not have been rendered unconscious. And as far as the rain goes, or the fountains spraying into his motorcycle, mm -hmm. we've tested Michelin, Pirelli, Goodyear, Dunlop tires, and there's one made in Germany by a company named Metz Metzler, and it is made out of a compound that adheres to wet pavement just as well as it does to dry pavement. So you might go in rain? Might go in. It's, uh, he'll have to make that decision, but we do have a rain date for the next night, yes. Wind. You, the wind must be under what? If there's... I'm not sure. I've jumped in some uh, pretty windy circumstances, but this is a long jump, and I will not take any chances, and I've been waiting for this for too long. You Caesar said I will be the last guy to try it, so if I don't think it's right... I'm smart enough to say I'm not going to go. Only in America can we fulfill our dreams, and I'm going to fulfill mine. We'll be right back with our remaining moments with Robbie Knievel and Evil Knievel on Larry King Live. Don't go away. Of whatever the pay-per-view gets in. Do, is Caesars paying you at all for the attention you're giving them? Are you getting a feed just to do this? It's costing them millions of dollars to put it on, along with our group. Okay, so when you start down that ramp, you're getting half of what the TV viewers pay to watch. Right? That's exactly right. No guarantee right. up front. Oh, yes. There is a guarantee oh, yeah, up front, but to yeah, promote it. A quarter of a million, but we, if we do uh, two or three million people on this thing at $14 or $15 a piece, that's a lot of money. I did it for $15,000 and had a $25,000 oh, hospital bill. You're going to get a lot more than two or three well, million. What are you expecting? Right? And there's, there's sponsors. Uh, did you mention Nolan Helmet? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, are you, will you wear a regular kind of uniform? I'll have a leather outfit, which is still the best thing against pavement that every racer uses, that to, like the big race in Daytona, and uh, padding in it, and uh, a helmet that's got twice as thick a padding as his, his the Nolan. 
that he had when he jumped back in. What, logically, are the odds? I'd say he's got a 75 to 90 percent chance of making it. Very easily because of his experience and ability. He's going to have all the cooperation in the world out there. The Caesars Palace people have done everything they can to make the area right. They're going to fence it, build a grandstand, and uh, they've been just great with us. And I, I feel that uh, with the people that's going to surround him, the camera crews, Andy Sedaris, of course, has been with mm -hmm. me for years, and it's it's going to be something that'll that'll be a good thing for him. But Larry, remember, you got to be alive to collect in this <laughs> business. You nervous? No. A little bit. Excited. I'm only human. Gonna make it? I'm scared of the dark, you know. Confident? <laughs> I'm very confident, and I'll be a lot more ready in two weeks. You got the right genes, too. Thank you, Rob. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Evil. It's nice to see you again, man. That's gonna be some night. Robbie Knievel and Evil Knievel, thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend for the whole crew at Larry King Live and for Tammy Wynette. Good evening.